Hey guys, well we just got done hunting the latest cold front that came through Kansas. Uh, and we're done early so it gives me an opportunity to give you a look at the equipment I'm using. I've always been a fan of when I buy something, I buy quality. A quality doesn't necessarily mean high price though, and I keep saying that even in fishing, uh, waterfowl hunting, coyote hunting, whatever it is you do. Uh, here's a perfect example. This is some of the decoys that I'm running. All of them are going to look this way. They're from the 1980s. Uh, this is a G&H decoy, uh, and you can see a lot of the paint is busted off of them. Uh, I don't run fancy new decoys these things I've been using these things for 40 years uh, and they still function uh, if you're new to waterfowling you don't need to go out and buy a hundred and fifty dollar a dozen decoys uh, if you can find some there's some out there that are sixty seventy dollars a dozen those things will work just fine in fact uh, if you can get on Facebook or some of the marketplaces uh, the second hand decoys that I guarantee you that's what I would be running uh, at any marsh when I show up my decoys are gonna be the worst ones there as you can see uh, they still have some paint though right uh, I rig them a little bit differently too uh, Texas rigs are very popular now but when I go hunting into these big marshes I go very deep into the big marshes so I'm going farther than a lot of people are uh, part of my strategy is to get in deeper the marshes past where most of the people run. In order to do that, my bag is much lighter than everybody else. I'm not running lead weights. I'm not running Texas rigs. This is what I'm running right here. It's a piece of conduit. Uh, it's hollow. It weighs virtually nothing. And then I've just got some tangle-free line on it. My bag of 30 decoys is half the weight of somebody running a Texas rig or lead weights on their decoys. And I specifically do that because I know I'm gonna go farther into the marsh than most of those guys do. Also, something that allows me to do that, and I'm just gonna to touch on it just briefly, uh, is a fitness program. In the summertime and even now, I'm out uh, walking and running with a, a weighted backpack. Uh, that's what I enjoy doing. I'm not doing that to prep for uh, 5Ks. I don't run any races. I don't do any of that. I do it for personal enjoyment and to make these experiences more enjoyable. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna walk a mile into cattails in mud, that kind of thing, when you show up to the spot that you're gonna set your decoys, you want to be fresh. You want to be as fresh as you possibly can. Uh, and if you don't have some kind of fitness program. When you show up to your spot, you're going to be beat before you even get there. I've also been shooting up all of the old shells uh, that I had gathered up, you know, over the years. I've settled on one thing now for ducks. Ducks over decoys, past shooting ducks, all ducks, this is what I'm shooting. The manufacturer doesn't matter. If it's Winchester, uh, Remington, Federal, it doesn't matter. What matters is what's in them, right? Uh, these are a three and a half inch steel two. That's what I fell on. Uh, these are 1,500 feet per second. Any of this shell that you get that's 1,500 feet per second muzzle velocity, two, number two shot, and three and a half inch with one and a half ounces of payload that's what I'm shooting they're right around $18 a box so I'm not shooting any of that uh, high dollar uh, $30 a box stuff now with that being said when I'm past shooting geese with a 10 gauge I'm shooting a reload and it is bismuth and that stuff's expensive uh, even to buy it and reload that stuff's expensive so but that that's what I'm shooting clearly guys I'm not spending a lot of money on equipment I'm gonna put my money in gas I'm going to get to the marshes that have the highest concentration of waterfowl and then I'm going to get to the spot on that marsh that, where the ducks want to be. Uh, if, it's, if it's out in the middle, if it's a mile in, I'm going to go a mile. If you got to bust 
a bunch of ice to get there, I'm going to do that. When I hit the marsh, I'm going to be ready to go. And I travel light. Uh, I don't carry any blind bags. I don't carry any blinds. Uh, I've got a gun. I've got shells. I've got five or six bottles of water. And I've got a very light bag of decoys. And that's it. I'm traveling light. And the longer these birds have been here, and the more decoys they've seen, the more decoy shy they get. They'll develop very definite flight patterns over these marshes and through these marshes. Sometimes, mid to late year, all you've got left is pass shooting. So if you watch these ducks, find where these flight patterns are, you can position yourself underneath them uh, and get some just pretty good pass shooting. Now by pass shooting, I'm not talking 50, 80 yard shots on ducks. I mean, these things are still there on the deck, uh, but you do have to get underneath them or very close to their flight patterns to make this thing work. So uh, now they are gonna be longer than decoy shots, obviously. I mean, you, you might have to pull off some 35, 40 yard shots, uh, but you also might get some that are right in your face. You know, uh, they're gonna be rooftop high and and really moving over the top of you so it's it's challenging and a lot of fun the waders i run are nothing special these are a magellan uh, i think they were about 120 dollars uh, at one of the uh, big box stores uh, it seems like i have to get new waders every year or every two years so i don't run expensive stuff i'm not into that 300 dollars waders uh, my coat this is a columbia widgeon parka is what this is uh, I got it on sale from Columbia themselves for about $150 something like that it's extremely warm and these things are waterproof I've got one that's uh, from 1980 so 40 years old right still waterproof today so that's the quality of Columbia stuff well here we are guys this is the beginning of duck season right here every one of these cold fronts is going to be productive for us uh, if if we get the opportunity, we want to be on the front side of these cold fronts. We want to be on the back side of these cold fronts. You know, once these clouds roll through, on the back side of this thing can be just as productive as the front side, right? Uh, and it'd be quite a bit warmer. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. More content coming real soon. See ya.